a beautiful day. It is gorgeous out here today. Fluffy clouds, a little bit of high cirrus, slight breeze, and although it doesn't look like it in the yellow grass, there's sprigs of green coming up. I received a radio from Radiotity, actually a couple of them, both DMR radios, and the problem is the repeater is 80 miles that way. Okay, and I can't quite get a direct hit on it. It's at the edge of Grand Mesa, and unfortunately the edge of Grand Mesa is obscured by that little hill right over there. And I don't have a UHF beam antenna. A lot of DMR work is done on UHF. It's a beautiful thing. It's interesting the way it comes. It comes assembled except to save a little space. All of the all of the a little bit more here. All of the elements are folded like this. So you have to unfold them and they kind of snap right in. There's uh, wing nuts on the back that hold these into place. They are designed so that the elements are actually insulated from the mast. Or boom. <laughs> this is a boom. It's going to go on a mast. Mast goes up, boom goes horizontal. This thing has a small matching device in here so you can put 50 ohm um, unbalanced in here and this is the driven element right here so this is reflector directors all of these are directors now with that many directors it's going to be mighty directional so we're going to mount it vertically like this point down there because Vertical is what FM is done mostly with. Uh, if we were doing long distance like CW or sideband, we'd mount it this way. We're going to mount it this way. Now, one of the problems with mounting it this way is if you put this right up on a mast, that mast tries to be an element. So we're not going to do that. We're going to put together a little standoff kit. And this should go on fairly easily. It's going to stick out from here like that and then we'll put the antenna out here. So I'm going to re-aim the camera and then we'll continue. Okay, the very first thing to do is mount the standoff. It comes in two pieces. This has... It's interesting the way this works. You put it on this way and it'll loop and uh, push it over, hold it, and it's down. So all we have to do, we're going to try and not get any cables in here. Okay, and it's going to point that way. The pointing is critical. I'm going to put it up here. It's a UHF antenna, so it's many many wavelengths above the ground so I don't know that we'd say it's fully like it's in free space but it's not far different from that and we'll just keep tightening this down <laughs> and keep tightening this down okay get it about where we want it there is a brace here that goes up to this. There's a screw on this side. I should have a little GoPro camera on a hat. One thing I don't want to do out here where there's grass is drop a piece of hardware. That can be bad. Okay, there we go. Okay, this is the antenna and there's a little tape mark right there. This uh, extension came without 
any instructions. All done by hand, no tools. Now, I want to point this thing, and I'm going to assume that it's going to shoot straight down the barrel, and I want it to shoot about there. It is pointed as straight at that repeater as I can make it. Now the coax is here. I'm going to get some coax, connect from here. I'm going to wire the coax along the shaft, come out the extension, and down to the shack. Again, the thing is many wavelengths above the ground. So adding height all it would do would be to give me a little bit of distance, but the thing is that uh, that's actually 5 watts will do that just fine. Now, the reason I got this antenna again, I've got some radios from Radioddity to test, both DMR radios. Plus I have the GD77, which I've tested before, and now there's a DMR repeater up there. So, uh, what we're going to do the rest of the video is... Uh, the problem to be solved in this video has to do with digital mobile radio. This is a little GD77 that I've already reviewed, and I received two more radios from Radioddity. Uh, one like this but without the keypad, and another one that they've done jointly with Baofeng. And in fact, it's not released yet. So, in order to properly test a DMR radio you would think you would need to do it with the DMR repeater and that up until recently has not been possible here on the western slope but some sainted soul in Grand Junction Colorado did in fact put up on the edge of Grand Mesa a DMR repeater and it's linked it's linked into various systems and uh, I just had some calls today you'll hear this later N0OER, KD8Y or WYL, and K7GDF. And what was interesting about this was that the DMR repeaters are all linked to each other and they have what are called talk groups. Talk groups are geographic areas covered by different repeaters, and sometimes a talk group is covered by multiple repeaters. In this case, talk group TAC310 happens to be on lots of repeaters and it's a nationwide channel so N0OER was Gene in Kansas KD8WYL was in Akron, Ohio and uh, K7GDF was in Salt Lake City so now here's something interesting okay this is a radio that's on 70 centimeters what kind of amateurs have privileges on 70 centimeters? I will tell you what kind of ham. All hams, including technicians. So, here's the thing to think about. These radios are not very expensive on the order of $100. So they're really a lot less expensive than their Motorola equivalents. Now, the problem is that when I first started uh, trying to do something with this. I took this radio with the rubber duck. Here's the rubber duck that came with it, okay. And so I put the antenna on like that. And I laid it down on the desk and turned it to TAC 310 to listen. This is before today. Well, let's listen to some of the sounds that I got. <laughs> Well, that was fun. Not very useful, but fun. 
I did have this up in Grand Junction once and had a similar conversation with somebody up there in Grand Junction uh, on the DMR repeater. But I decided that in order to properly review these radios, I needed a much better UHF antenna. So because I think diamond antennas are so good, so well built, I went to uh, DX Engineering, you have to order through a dealer, went through DX Engineering and purchased the uh, UHF antenna. It's 10 element beam and it's got just as much gain as a 10 element beam on any frequency which is a lot. So I didn't have to do much to put it together, put it up, good things happen and you can listen to some of these contacts that I had earlier today. J0G from T7GDF. T7GDF. K7GDF. Here's KE0OG. Uh, name is Dave, located in Colorado. Sorry about that. He, uh, you sound great, but you're just a little bit hot coming out of the radio, so you might want to continuing to back off a little bit. Okay, I'll do that. How does this sound here? That's a little bit better. Give me a little bit more. Okay, I've got the radio about a foot from my mouth right now. It's a Radiotity GD77, so this is my first time really trying it on a real DMR repeater because they just put one in in Grand Junction. Uh, go ahead. All right, right. I know my local repeater did 9900 for for the uh, parent, which will which will uh, sing back to you your own voice and give you a, a relative volume level and all that kind of stuff. So see how you sound and if you're getting any glitchy artifacts and stuff like that. So it's handy to use that. Um, and uh, being a foot away, you were still rock solid. So you, I don't know if that radio has got softer that you can back it off or what it is. I suspect it is. I think a couple of the radios is of the CS and the radiotomy seem to have a reputation for being extremely hot right out of the box. And, uh, and, and it's, it's almost annoying. It's just kind of really, really drives it hard. So uh, you have plenty of you. I normally would never tell anybody to back off their signal, but, uh, but it, it would sound better for you. Anyway, k 7 i I'll just listen. Okay, uh, yeah, tell me your name again. Uh, my name is Dave. Go ahead. All right, Dave. My name is Jeff. Jeff. I'm using an MD380 like everyone else in a little jumble spot, with a tiny little thing bubbly in the vehicle right now, so... I'm hoping that you're not getting many uh, digital artifacts from me, hopefully none. No, your signal is S9, uh, no problem at all. Where are you located? I'm actually in Salt Lake in the valley and running around doing a little work right now, which is something I don't normally ever do get on the radio while I'm working, so I'm going to get off. <laughs> um, anyway, good to talk to you, Dave. Uh, Oh boy, I wish I had focused on your call sign. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll let you give it. K7 JDF 73. Okay, very good. K7 GDF, 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 uh, 73. And uh, wave, if you would, out the window as you drive through Salt Lake. I have two sisters there. So 73, we'll catch you later. KE0OG, clear. I'm going to set this thing aside right now. I think I've got plenty for the video. It works. It works really well. I'm very surprised. I talked with Salt Lake, Akron, uh, Junction City, Kansas, um, all over a handheld. This is the kind of thing a technician can do today, right now. Okay, so this is a GD77 which I have reviewed before. So it most decidedly works on UHF, uh, on DMR. That was a DMR repeater up in Grand Junction, Colorado. And it goes through, um, oh, some kind of system. It's not the Motobro, but something very similar. And I think they're interconnected. So that means 
that I mean it's really wild I've got to see if I can talk with people out of the country I've got to find out what their talk route numbers are and program that in so I think I'm just gonna shut this off for right now there <laughs>